So, in this tutorial, we're gonna implement a simple swimming mechanic. Uh, we can go into the water and kind of float statically like this. But we can also move forward and uh, change to this horizontal capsule. Um, we'll restrict ourselves to the surface for now, so no diving. But um, yeah, should be quick and easy. So, let's get started. Before we start with the whole swimming stuff, just a quick follow up on the last tutorial where we did the jump. I added this enforcement jump height function here in between this branch and the setting of the jump timer. And what this does is, let me show you first if I bridge this, and um, this is now how it was before, how it is for you probably still. If I um, press the jump button for a very short time, kinda does this uh, miniature jump, which I'm not very fond of. So, um, I added this in between here just to enforce a minimal height for the jump. Um, what this does is that it just looks at the jump timer and if it's zero, it means we have just left the ground, we just started pressing the uh, jump button. It adds an impulse to the pawn, so it kind of um, has to reach a minimal height. Uh, I chose 250, uh, you can also expose this as a variable in the actor blueprint and uh, make it adjustable if you want. But yeah, if we do this, um, then no matter how shortly I press the jump button, it always reaches a, um, you know, minimal height with this jump. It just makes it look a lot better in my opinion, and there's really no reason to have such a small jump. Um, this of course also increases the overall jump height, so I toned this jump force down a bit. I think this was uh, 400,000 before, and um, also this I set to uh, 350,000 as a default, just so that we are kind of we're kind of consistent and uh, reach the same height as before. So yeah, that's just something I wanted to fix very quickly before we move on. Now, uh, yeah, there you go. The animations that I'm going to be using for this tutorial come from this asset here called Phoenix Anim Pack 3. If you've been following the free for the month stuff for some time now, you uh, may have this as well. This was free in March of 2020. Uh, if you don't have it, don't worry about it. You can either use your own swimming animations, or if you really don't have any and don't want to buy any, um, you can still follow along just fine, you know. Uh, the logic is not going to be affected by missing animations, and uh, you can still follow along, and uh, once you have animations, you can just plug them in in a matter of minutes, so don't worry about that. But if you do have this, don't be like the guys in the review section here who can't figure out how to open this up in a higher engine version. Just go to add to project, uh, go to show all projects here, click that, and uh, select your GMC demo project that you are using in whatever version, and um, just go here and select the highest supported uh, asset version, and just add that anyway, you know, it's gonna work just fine. Uh, Unreal Engine is forward compatible, uh, which means that uh, animations and meshes and stuff are gonna work in uh, any version higher than they were created with as well. So yeah, just do that. Uh, so I just noticed after the fact that this uh, asset that I'm using with the animations that I'm using is not available for sale anymore in the marketplace. So um, if you search for it, you won't find it. But you know, there are other ones that you can use, uh, potentially buy, you know. Um, I'm not affiliated or anything, I just want to point you in the direction of these. Um, but as I said, you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you can use placeholder animations or none at all. You can still follow along, you know, what am I gonna do? Back in the GMC project, depending on what you decided to go with now, um, you may have a new folder here with new animations. Um, just as before, you can select these and go to Asset Actions and Bark Edit via Property Matrix, and you can just go to this Animation tab here and on the Skeleton, uh, choose the one that's already in the GMC project, pay attention to the path here and select the right one. And then you... Um, yeah, have the correct skeleton assigned, and we really only need two animations from this for this tutorial. You know, one for swimming on the surface, and the other one for being idle in the water. I also made this pool of water here. Uh, you can design this as you want as well. Uh, the only important thing is that you have a physics volume. If you go to uh, search classes here and type in physics, that you have a physics volume that has the uh, water volume flag enabled, and also physics on contact. And if I make this a bit bigger here, place it somewhere where I can find it, I can show you that um, the organic movement component already has the uh, water physics integrated. So if I go into this uh, physics volume here, you kind of uh, you can see that he starts uh, having water physics. He kind of flows upward due to buoyancy, and um, yeah, so that's already in there. Uh, we only need to. Uh, 
implement the animations and uh, uh, vary the uh, collision shape and extent depending on what we're doing in the water. Also, um, this um, this texture here, I got this from a um, plugin that's built in called just just called Water. If you enable that, you will also have access to this texture here. I just slapped this texture onto a um, plane. You know, this uh, default plane here. I just drag that in. Um, place the uh, texture on there. Uh, this texture is located in the uh, landmass folder. If you have this uh, plugin enabled, you can, um, you know, enable show engine content here. Then search for landmass. Select that folder. Search for river and then you'll be able to find this texture as well i mean it's a river texture so it's kind of the water's kind of flowing but which looks a bit odd in my case but um you know you can of course use your own textures if you want to i just wanted to use something that's built in and uh, available to everybody um one other thing i did is that i um, changed the uh, collision preset of this plane here to block the uh camera because as i said in the beginning we are going to limit ourselves to um swimming on the surface so i don't want the want the camera to be able to go underwater but yeah um with that setup out of the way we can start programming now continuing in our gmc blueprint here the first thing i want to do is actually um restrict the pawn to staying on the surface of the water you know preventing him from going underwater and i'm gonna use the uh on movement mode, changed event for that. Don't forget to call the parent. That goes in there, that goes in there. And uh, this event is going to be called once the movement mode has already changed, so we can uh, branch on whether we are in the water, so we uh, is swimming. And if we are swimming, we want to update the uh, velocity. Update velocity. It's just going to set the velocity to whatever we give it, and um. I want to grab our current velocity that we have when we're just entering the water. And um, the X and Y components, you know, they can stay the same, they don't matter. But I want to clamp the um, Z velocity, the downward velocity of the pawn, to something very low, like minus 150. The upward velocity can stay the same. Um, but this will kind of, no matter how high, from how high the pawn falls into the water, you know, it's just, as soon as he hits the water, just gonna um, clamp his velocity to minus 150. So uh, that will, that's not enough for him to go completely underwater, so that's gonna take care of that. Gonna stay on the surface with that. And um, since we're going to um, change our root collision extent dynamically, we wanna save our default values. So we can always return to them. So the, I want to save the default radius of my capsule and also the uh, default of height. And we're just going to do that in begin play. So, um, yeah. Goes here, it goes here, and uh, the function that we we'll use to retrieve these values is called get root collision extent. And make sure you re uh, whenever you have you're handling one of these uh, root collision functions, there are several of them. Uh, make sure that you read the description so you know what uh, what the format actually is and what your what the function potentially returns. Uh, it says for the vertical capsule, uh, the radius is the x component and for the uh, half height it's the z and um, the reason why you need to be careful with this is because um, especially when you're handling capsules uh, because unreal by default only knows the um, vertically oriented uh, capsule so um, and it also has this radius and half height members so these become kind of ambiguous once you introduce a um, 90 degree um, rotated capsule into this because with a horizontal capsule, the radius member actually uh, like describes the actual height of the capsule along the z-axis, and the half height uh, member kind of describes the uh, width of the capsule, you know, in the plane. So uh, that's kind of ambiguous. So uh, make sure you read the uh, description so you actually know what you what you have to put into and what you're getting out of these functions. All right, with that done, uh, we can 
now take care of the actual like changing of the uh, root collision. Uh, we need a few functions for that. I'm gonna call one just swim. Another one, which will be can't swim, is gonna be pure function, and it's just gonna return whether we can swim. And uh, by swim, I mean you know the swimming itself is automatic. If once you touch a uh, physics volume that has the water flag enabled, it's just gonna change automatically to the uh, swimming physics. But with swim, I mean what this function should tell us is if we we should actively swim in the water, like trigger the crawl animation and uh, change to the um, ch change to the horizontal capsule. You know, swimming actively in the water, not just floating in it. What this function is going to tell us, and also we need a function for uh, changing to the vertical um, capsule, and also for changing to the uh, flat capsule. Capitalize that, and um, yeah, it should be everything we need. We don't need an input for that, as I said, it's automatic. And um, so, if we are in the water, so this is swimming function here comes from the uh, built in nav movement component, it's overridden in the uh, organic movement component. So, is swimming in that sense if it comes from here just means we're in the water, we have water physics, but swimming. What I mean is that uh, he's actively swimming, so we can actually uh, trigger this. We want to change to the uh, horizontal cap, so you can call this something else if that confuses you. Like, uh, for example, can uh, crawl or something like crawl as in the swimming technique, not crawling on the ground. Um, so if, if we can do that, we want to change to the flat capsule. Otherwise, we want to change to the vertical capsule. You know, either because we want to be idle in the water, we stopped actively swimming, or be, we left the water. In that case, we also want to uh, return to our normal capsule, which is where the uh, saved values here come into play then. So that's our high-level logic done, and now we can actually fill those functions. Alright, I'm going to start with this one. Um, I'm going to check for two things here. First of all, if we're actually uh, pressing any of the input buttons, you know, if this has uh, any length at all, so if this is greater than uh, zero, you know, checking for if we are pressing any of the uh, WASD buttons. And also, um, only, only want to actively swim if we have reached some uh, minimal movement speed in the water. So I'm going to set this to uh, 250. You can uh, adjust this as you like. Yeah, only if these conditions are met, I want to um, change to the flat capsule. And the way this is going to work is that we're going to change from, for um, transitioning from the vertical to the horizontal capsule, we're going to, um, while we have the vertical capsule, we're going to interpolate our half height down to sphere and then set the flat capsule. And the other way around, we're going to immediately set the uh, vertical capsule to a sphere and then interpolate backwards up to our regular half height. Half height. Because, um, you know, first of all, I want to show you the uh, lerping, but also initially I thought um, that I could maybe have some transition animation between the two swimming states, um, where, you know, the pawn kind of brings his knees to his chest and then kind of moves into the crawl from that, more like you would do it in real life. But I couldn't find an animation like that, I don't have one, and I'm not going to make one, so... Um, because right now, uh, how it's going to be for us right now is just that it's going to like tip over in the water, just to interpolate between those uh, two animations directly. But if you uh, can make make such an animation or you have one, uh, our logic is already going to approximate that more closely. So uh, yeah, that's it's, that's how it's going to be. So we we'll check here if we have uh, actually have the uh, vertical capsule collision still, because if not, we have already reached our goal. If that is the case, then we're going to check here um, if we have already reached this sphere shape that I was talking about. And we're going to do that by uh, checking our collision extent because, um, you know, if you have a capsule, being a sphere is just uh, if your um, radius is the same as your half height. So um, if that is the case, then we want to continue lerping our half height towards this uh, radius value.
with some speed. I'm gonna set 300. Um, but if not, if we have uh, we have uh, reached this uh, sphere shape already, then we can just set our wood collision shape. Uh, safe just means that um, it's not gonna apply any changes if that would cause a blocking collision. You know, that just so we don't change our shape into a wall or something. So we change our uh, to the horizontal capsule in that case. And um, yeah. For the vertical capsule, so um, that's when we are actively swimming. If we are not, uh, we either, you know, stopped in the water, changed to being either in the water again to the vertical capsule, or we came out of the water, uh, in which case we take this exact path here. Um, but in either case, we're going to do the same. We're gonna, this is going to be similar. We're going to check if we have the uh, horizontal capsule collision here. If we do, uh, we can. We just want to directly change uh, to the um, vertical capsule here uh, in a sphere shape. So it's just going to be radius for everything. And um, but if not, we're going to check if we have already attained this um, this uh, our regular half height. So uh, we're going to check if our current half height. Is uh, still smaller than our um, default half height, and if that's the case, uh, we still we want to continue lurping towards that uh, target half height. We use the same speed here, and uh, this adjust position here. I want to um, give that into this uh, value here. If we are moving on the ground, only if we are moving on the ground, I want to do this. And what this does is that, um, forget about the water for a second. If you're on the ground and uh, you are you have a vertical capsule on the ground and, uh, you know, the lower side will be just above the ground. And if we then uh, increase our half height like we are doing, uh, uh, like we are doing in our case here, um, if we do that, um, you know, this half height is on both sides, you know, if we increase the half height, it's going to be get bigger, shape's going to get bigger in bo on both sides, so uh, on the lower side, it's going to just collide with the ground then. And, um, you know, in, in this case, because this uh, also uses the uh, set root collision extend safe function for setting and for looping, um, nothing's going to happen because it would crash into, uh, would collide with the ground on the lower side. And what this then does is, uh, if we set this to true and uh, the adjust direction is up, it's gonna move the uh, capsule up by how much we have, uh, you know, uh, want to change the half height before actually set uh, applying the change of, to the actual uh, extent of the collision shape. So that way we don't collide with the ground and uh, the change is gonna be applied. Uh, in the water, that doesn't really matter that much because we're just on the surface and there's not gonna be any ground underneath us. Um, but, uh, you know, if we are just coming out of the water and we want to um, still, you know, in that flat capsule shape, then we're going to come out of the water, we're going to change to this, um, then we potentially could get stuck if we just ignore this. We get stuck on our uh, lower half height here. So, uh, yeah, that's the reason for that. And um, I think that's uh, our logic done. Uh, it's not done because I forgot to plug these uh, values in here. Probably caught that. All right, now we're good. One more thing that we gotta do is in our actor blueprint here, um, go to the GMC and um, we wanna change this buoyancy uh, to to a high value just so that when we switch to the flat capsule, I don't want them to stay in the water or anything. I just want them to come up quickly. Um, and then we also don't want to, you know, be uh, forced out of the water by this upward force here. So we're going to set this uh, fluid min exit speed to some higher value, like 300. And um, you also might want to, um, you know, display your collision shape that when we test this now, you can actually see what's going on. All right, trying this out now, and I've made this uh, collision shape more visible again for the YouTube video. And also, I think I haven't mentioned this before, make sure that you have some kind of ramp that goes into your fluid volume where you can get in and out. Because the way we have set it up right now is that uh, 
you can't jump when in the water you know when we look in a back at our jump function here uh, we can't jump if we are not on the ground uh, you can change that of course uh, may might be a little homework for you uh, but I'm gonna restrict myself to uh, going in and out of the water for this uh, in this way now so if we test this out now if we go into the water he kind of changes to this flat capsule it looks a bit goofy because we haven't set up the animations yet but we can clearly see that we have uh, there's this uh, transitioning between the vertical and flat capsules working and um yeah uh and next we're gonna then set up our animations in our animation blueprint we need a new variable so go to the event graph and uh we need to know if we are currently swimming if we have a um vertical capsule or a horizontal one we'll call it flat capsule uh and we can quite simply set these by um just retrieving the values directly from the gmc so um is swimming has vertical capsule and um, has horizontal capsule. Hook that all up. And um, this allows us to quite simply um, distinguish our two swimming states by the kind of uh, capsule that we're having. So uh, go to the anim graph and uh, introduce your two new states. Um, one for being idle in, in the water and another one for be uh, for actively swimming in the water. So um, the animation for this uh, is you know whatever your animation is called. Uh, same for the other one. I think it's called swimming on surface. Yeah, swim surface for me. And um, yeah, we can change from uh, both of these states to uh, be in the air. So we just need to check is airborne. And uh, we can also change from being in the air to uh, both of these swimming states. So um, this one's gonna be whether we are in the water, we are swimming, or um, not, or and um, if we have a this is idle if we have the uh, vertical capsule and uh, same for the other state. That's the wrong one. Same for the other state with the um, flat capsule. And we can of course also change between these in the water. So um, yeah, we can simply uh, distinguish by the kind of uh, collision shape that we're having. So it has flat capsule and uh, has vertical capsule. And yeah, we can also change from being in the water to going to the uh, to being grounded. So um, is grounded and uh, is swimming. Yeah, I think that's it. We don't need a transition from this I uh, this idle here to uh, swimming in the water because. Um, once we leave the water, we're gonna have the uh, vertical capsule automatically, so it's gonna go through this state to here. Um, yeah, all right, that should be it. Uh, let's try this out. Going in the water now, and um, yeah, that seems to work as intended. Um, one thing that I still want to change is the uh, aim of set for the head. I want it to apply while we are like idle in the water like this. Uh, I want to look to be able to look around. Uh, while doing this, but uh, not while we are swimming like that, you know, if you look at this, that looks really weird. So I want to change that. Um, I'm gonna go here where the uh, aim offset is being applied, and I want to change this so it doesn't uh, apply while we are swimming and have the uh, flat capsule active. So while these two things apply, uh, we don't want the aim offset for the head. So that should fix it. Um, try that again. If I go into the water now, we can see that um, yeah, this uh, aim offset is not active while I'm doing this swimming animation.
but it's active while uh, we are idle in the water. Alright, that's that. Our swimming is working and um, this is also going to work in multiplayer, no problem. If you remember, we have not introduced any new data that depends on the previous tick. Uh, these default values here are just going to be set in begin play and uh, we're not adjusting those dynamically. So um, these are not going to deviate, so there's nothing to bind here. So uh, this is just going to work in multiplayer and um, I'll let you try that out for yourself. I'm not going to do it now. But yeah, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and um, I'll see you again sometime with another tutorial. Don't know yet what that's gonna be, but um, until then, take care, and I'll see you later.